Hi everybody. I wanted to talk to you today about um, some tips for success for uh, Econ 201. Um, some ways that, despite all the studying you'll do, some ways that I think will help you be successful in this class, uh, some things to think about uh, as far as planning your work for this class, and uh, just some things to be mindful of to make sure that you can stay on top of your work. So I'm just going to talk and write so you guys can maybe take your own notes. Um, so tips for success. So the first thing I'd like to remind you about is the discussion board posting. Um, part of your discussion board grade each week is based on timeliness. You get 10 points of your 10% of your total uh, of your total grade uh, each week on the discussion is based on how early you post it. So if you post it by Thursday night, you get your full 10%. If you post it by Sunday night, um, you'll only get 3%. So if every week you're posting at the very last minute on Sunday night, it's going to have almost a, a half a letter grade effect on your grade compared to if you'd done it on Thursday night or earlier. So first thing I would say um, is post early or on time. Um, so of course that affects your grade. You get your highest score possible if you post on time, but it also, it's also good time management. Uh, you get it taken care of, you get it out of the way, you give other people a time to respond to you, for you to respond to other people if everyone's posting early. Um, and then you have the rest of the week to do your homework assignments, work on your paper, study for a quiz or an exam that might be happening that week. So, <clears throat> so leaving yourself time for other assignments is, is a good thing to remember. This isn't the only thing you're going to have to do each week. So get this out of the way first. There's no right or wrong answers um, as long as you are thoughtful about it. Uh, so you don't have to worry about studying for this. You can kind of bang this out early for other tasks. All right. The other thing... Uh, one other thing I'd like to mention uh, is your paper. So just like posting early each week, I'm going to ask you guys, and it's laid out there in your syllabus as well, to get started on your paper early. Um, it's a, it's going to be a fairly long paper. It's a 10 to 15 page paper. Uh, and it's designed so that each week you can write a, a new section of your paper. And each of those sections can almost be written independently. So each week, if you do the section that's assigned for that week, you'll be in really good shape uh, for the, to turn in your final paper on time, to have a really solid paper, to do some really good proofreading, make sure you don't have any spelling mistakes or grammar mistakes. Um, so if you start your paper early, it's really gonna help you down the line. Um, for now, we're in week one. Uh, what I tell you to do, right away is to choose your firm. So the paper is a case study of a firm. You're going to pick a firm, you're going to pick a company, and you're going to, we're going to analyze different economic, microeconomic factors that, um, that are affecting that company, that affect every company. So everyone's going to analyze the same stuff and everyone chooses their own firm. So let's say you pick McDonald's. Um, you want to know right away that that's what you're going to pick and you can start gathering information as soon as possible. Uh, things like their annual reports, um, quarterly financial reports as well, uh, any research that has been done about, um, about the company lately. So, so you can just start getting your materials together before you have to start any writing. Uh, if you wait to choose the firm until the end, then you have to do all the research and then all the writing right before the rough draft and then the final paper are due. So, if you choose it now, you'll be in a very good position to start your research and then start your writing. Um, so once you've chosen your firm, uh, you can very closely review the paper guidelines. Now that's just like the discussion rubric. Um, the paper, the paper has its own rubric, how it's graded and what the requirements are, how long it has to be, what font it has to be. Uh, the spacing, all that stuff is in the rubric. You can find it um, in the learning modules 
it's there at the bottom every every learning module because every module you're expected to do a little bit of work on your paper so you'll find it at the bottom of um of any learning module in the folder and it's um there's a lot of details that you need to go through there so you might need to read it a couple times uh you can ask me any questions that you have if you're confused about some of the requirements um but it's going to be a 10 to 15 page paper that's going to also include an introduction. Um, it's going to have an abstract on the title page. It's going to have a references page. So it's uh, it's a serious academic paper, um, and we want to make sure that everybody follows the guidelines. That's the biggest pitfall I think students have had is that they don't follow um, the guidelines, even though their paper is well researched um, or even well written. If you don't follow everything that's set out uh, for you in the paper, you're not going to get the best score possible. Um, so make sure you start reviewing that so you can be prepared when it comes time to, to write each of those sections. Um, the last thing I'm going to recommend for you all is to um, really get to know and start using the My Econ Lab resources. So use My Econ Lab. Now, you already know that your textbook is there on my econ lab. So a lot of you will just be relying on the e-text and that's fine. Uh, if you didn't want to purchase the physical book, that's just fine. Um, but my econ lab also has resources for you to use above and beyond just reading the, the chapters. Uh, there's a study plan, which I think is probably the most useful personally, but it's not the only thing they have available to you. So the study plan, uh, works off of answers you've already input. So at the beginning, it's just a generic study plan. But as you do homeworks and as you take tests, it gets to know the areas uh, where you need some more help, gets to know the areas that you clearly understand. They're not going to quiz you on that anymore. So they're going to give you practice problems to do based on areas where you need help and avoiding areas where you've shown you've got it. So I find that the most useful. So you can go to the study plan anytime. You can skip ahead to certain chapters if you want to just focus on a chapter at a time, maybe after you do the reading, go to the study plan for that chapter. Um, there are sample quizzes, which are un you can take ungraded. Uh, you can take as many times as you want. They're, they're long, they're the same length as a regular quiz, um, but it still might be a good way to see, you know, if you can do well on the sample quiz, you're probably going to do well in the actual quiz. So that's another uh, another study technique. Um, lastly, on um, on my econ lab, they act, they have chapter resources. So you can go if you look on my econ lab. Excuse my really awful handwriting here. So if you go on my econ lab on the when you're looking at the screen on the left hand side, <coughs> excuse me, where they have all the navigation. You'll see there's chapter resources. You can go to each chapter, and each chapter has basically the same kind of stuff. But one thing that I especially like in there is they have um, kind of like a video graph. So they'll take the graphs that are presented in the book, um, and they'll they'll kind of animate them and describe them, you know, as a voiceover. Uh, so describe what's happening in the graph. Like why is this curve shifting? What's happening when this curve? So it kind of gives you sort of that lecture experience um, that is sometimes missing when you're just reading the textbook. So if the graphs are kind of confusing, uh, this is a great place to go. You can go to that chapter, see if they have an animation for it, and it kind of explains to you what exactly is going on in that graph. Uh, there's a lot of graphs in economics. Um, and if it's not something you're, you're familiar with from other classes, uh, it might be a little bit overwhelming to make sense of it especially since we don't have the in-classroom experience um, that you might in another setting. So this is a great way to fill in that gap, I think. Um, so these are the main things that I think will help you be successful in this class. Um, and of course, as in every class here at SNHU, reach out to me, your instructor. Uh, I'm always more than happy to help. I'm happy to do demonstrations online, whether it be on a video or just show you how I would work out a problem. I can do that on a general discussion board. I do that all the time. Um, it's never a bad idea to ask a question if you're unsure about something. Like they say, no, no stupid questions. Uh, if you ask it, 
if you're thinking it, probably other students are thinking it too, which is why I encourage you to put it on the general discussion board for everyone to see. Uh, if it's something more of a personal nature, like if you're unsure about your, the firm that you chose for your paper, something that's specific to you, um, you can email me. But most questions about the concepts uh, or about the assignments can go right to the general discussion board um, for the benefit of everyone. Um, but yeah, these are, these are the basic the basic tips I have for you, and I think that if you do this and you know you study, you read read all the chapters and um, ask me any questions you have along with this stuff, you'll be in very good shape for this term.